in the presentation I was um, exploring how exactly we go about looking at heterogeneity in tumours and first of all how, how heterogeneous are lung tumours and whether that has clinical relevance first of all in the immunotherapy naive setting so before patients have received any immunotherapy and patients that won't necessarily receive immunotherapy whether the heterogeneity of the tumours has a clinical impact and moreover whether we can predict the number of neoantigens so for each mutation whether it might give rise to a peptide which can be recognised by the patient's own HLA type and then presented then we can assess whether that has a clinical relevance as well and sort of combine those two aspects. The idea is that rather, rather than targeting specific um, sort of whereas a cancer has, has lots of mutations and some of those will be drivers and some of those will be passengers with the neoantigens we can pretty much use the spectrum of mutations that will make that cancer be recognised as non-self non by the immune system. Yeah, so what we were doing is we were taking the clinical the sort of studies that have already been performed um, and then looking if we look at the heterogeneity whether that adds an extra layer. So, so far it's been shown that the number of mutations um, can lead to improved response rate to immune checkpoint blockade. So for instance in lung cancer and melanoma there's a clear relationship there. But then still there's only, only some of them can't, can't be explained. So there's a few outliers where they've got a large number of mutations and therefore a large number of new antigens, but they still don't respond to the immune checkpoint blockade. So what we, we want to say is, like, what if we add the layer of heterogeneity? So if we look at whether the neoantigens are not just present, but whether they're present in every tumour cell within the tumour, whether that also has an impact. And our results suggested that, yes, it appears that not just presence, but whether they're in all cancer cells or only a subset with the homogeneous tumours appearing to do better than the heterogeneous tumours. First of all, I think we need to validate it in a larger set. So, so far we used all the data we could get hold of, but it's rather some disparate studies and there's also patients that have been treated with various different things before, before receiving the immune checkpoint blockade. So I think we need to make sure that we're absolutely correct. And then you can, in terms of moving this forward to actually benefiting patients, I guess the idea was how, how can we how can we use this? Can we use this sort of to help in combination to try to improve so we know which patients are more likely to respond and then also whether it could be used in some sort of vaccine type strategy so you can then isolate the sort of clonal neoantigens and then you could perhaps inject them back in. Yeah, I mean, and you could, I, I think the whole idea of the neoantigens and everything is in some ways the sort of ultimate personalised therapy because it's not only just selecting the cohort of patients that are going to do well, you want to identify the exact neoantigens in that specific patient and that's what we've been finding in, in these analyses is that in general every patient's tumour is very unique so therefore the neoantigens they have are very unique as well. Cur currently we're at the stage where to, to fully understand a tumour, for instance, one project we're doing is a Tracer X study where we take multiple regions um, of tumours and then analyse these to work out how the tumours have evolved and how they've changed over time and which neoantigens are present in all tumour cells and which are present in a subset. But this isn't necessarily feasible for every single patient at this current stage and so I think we need to move the technology forward as well and so we can see how can we sort of do this in as minimally invasive way as possible and get as much information as possible and this this is where potentially sort of using things like circulating biomarkers or way essentially just taking a blood biopsy or, or something like that whether that could then replace these sort of very extensive sampling techniques that we're currently doing as well. Um, well in reference to the, the sort of future of um, genomics, I, yeah, I, I think it's, it's definitely an incredibly exciting time because there's all this data that's, that's out there, and especially I mean, from my perspective, I'm a bioinformatician, so my job is to analyse the data 
and I, I think we're learning new ways to look at the same data we've had before. So initially, the initial study might have just been to sequence the genome to work out which are driver mutations and which um, are passenger mutations, but now we're going beyond that to, to look at the passenger mutations and identify the neoantigens there as well. So I think, I think it really is a very exciting time for cancer researchers in terms of understanding the genomes and hopefully also for patients as well, where we're seeing sort of treatment strategies that I think will rev revolutionize the way we sort of see cancer.